uh, you, you know, get out in mind or get back in the box, right? And a lot of dog training, it's supposed to be positive reinforcement dog training, right? Really, like what's going on there? People are controlling the dog's food and uh, they let them out of their crate and they say, hey, listen, we're going to work on some healing or we're going to work on some tricks or something. And, you know, you better act like you're really interested in what I'm doing or you're going back in the crate and you're going to go back in the crate hungry. And I am not in any way dis <laughs> disputing that that works, okay? And I'm not saying that you can't use it to your advantage. But what I am saying, come on nurse, is that it leaves out a whole lot of training opportunities and it leaves out the most important training opportunities which come from learning by doing, okay? So like out of all these dogs, the only one right now that has to be walking with me specifically is Grover because he's on the leash. All these other dogs, they're just kind of moving around and experimenting. Right? They're experimenting with their natural, natural social urges. They're experimenting trying to figure out how to get attention from me. They're uh, experimenting with the environment, right? And exper experimentation is what leads to growth, you know? Specifically, what leads to growth is stress. Okay, so these dogs are out and they're doing stuff. And like they have, like see that one right there? It, it kind of fell off this little, uh, this little walkway. Well, like the dog just learned something, okay? And so if you're too strict in your obedience, if you're too like uh, strict in your protocols for how you approach training the dog, you rob them of the opportunity to fail. And failure, come on nerd, failure is an integral part of, uh, you know, maturation. Like if you ever know a person or a dog that wasn't allowed to fail when they were young, well, then I can pretty much guarantee you that that person or dog uh, is very fragile, you know, very fragile minded and they can't deal with adversity. Adversity is something that one learns to deal with over the course of time. Now, of course, there are, you know, there are genetic um, influences in how much adversity one has, like, a, you know, a schnauzer or how much resilience one has. You know, this schnauzer, I have to be much more careful when I'm training a schnauzer. If I make a mistake and fuss at him or put him in a situation where, um, what I'm asking of him consistently induces failure. He's probably going to shut down and not want to participate. Whereas, come here. Whereas uh, this dog, in this case, hunt, like, listen, she's all over the place all the time. She's on the brush pile. She's in the boat. She's out of the boat. She's just doing stuff all the time. And she's got a very naturally resilient temperament. So I have a lot more leeway with her. Uh, you guys know that I do lots of labs. And one of the reasons that we like the labs is because they have very, very forgiving temperaments, right? So like you get out with them and you know, they're ready to learn. And if something goes wrong, they're like, even for you, like if your training day is not going good and you've got a nice lab, they kind of look up at you like, it's okay, boss, we'll get it tomorrow, you know? Come on, Grover. So, uh, you know, I want you to understand the, you know, natural traits and tendencies of the type of dog that you have. But I want to encourage you to get out, guys, and just do lots of stuff with them, with them when they're puppies. Uh, and as you're doing lots of stuff with them, then don't be so... You know, don't be so goal oriented, like be process oriented, get out and, and do stuff and allow things to happen and allow lessons to be learned that you might not have had the foresight to plan for.